Can someone say if the slide show is visible? It's visible. Yes, Very visible. good. So we had about 100 persons in the general room. So let's wait. At least we have 30 in this room that we start. <clears throat> Well, that was too optimistic for me. At least the speed of them coming in is not that great. Um, anyway, I want to welcome you all. Um, so my name is Mikko Strahlendorf. I come from the Finnish Meteorological Institute. Uh, and uh, I will present very shortly the E-SHAPE uh, project, which is uh, this year or this spring actually ending uh, Horizon, Euro, uh, Horizon 2020 project run from 2019 until now. Uh, and it seems, okay, 20 participants is our gain this time. So let's go to the slides. So eShape has actually seven different showcases, but this means that we actually have 27 from the outsets in 2019. This four year, 50 million project uh, started with 27 pilot services in these seven different areas. So there's one from ecosystems, one is for water resources, one is for disasters, uh, uh, there for agriculture and food security. There's a health, uh, public health uh, related showcase and renewable energy. Uh, but we will now concentrate only on the climate showcase because in addition to the 27, pilots, there were actually during the project also 10 pilots being kind of uh, onboarded, so added to the to the batch. Uh, and it would be pretty impossible in one hour and some minutes to, to be able to show, show all of them. So we will only have a kind of a subset of climate showcase pilot services, as the Climate Europe web festival obviously seems to be best suited for those to be presented. And we in the end had six pilots, so one pilot was onboarded, uh, and, and four of them had uh, seasonal forecasts as a common denominator and, and something to share as an experience between the uh, pilot services. Uh, one was then on carbon fluxes from oceans and land, and the onboarded one was on air quality monitoring in cities. But here we will now concentrate on the four uh, pilots that concentrate on seasonal forecast. Um, those are available from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. So almost all of us are using those um, or, or are using the climate, uh, let's say, uh, change service seasonal forecasts. So usually ensemble forecast of six months ahead uh, in 51 members. And that enables probability predictions. But I have here uh, from one of the, our services the example that when you look at three different uh, variables, then there's very important many times for the end users is that these these um, informations from the seasonal forecasts have to be bias adjusted uh, and especially brought up to date in some cases. So when you have these systems like a snow snow height, then obviously the snow height is something at the point. It is not from the start whatever a different options but just one so you have to start for example from a certain certain snow height from where you always progress the different uh, forecast uh, ensemble members so these kind of adjustments have been made in the projects uh, pilots and also usually a one let's say monthly statistics based 20 year um, like bias adjustment but I, I don't want to take more time here. We do have uh, three uh, pilots present here, and I will then present one of them uh, myself again, coming back after Saskia, Miriam, and Andrea, who will have the urban resilience, the harvester seasons, and the seasonal preparedness uh, pilots presented. Uh, Jaco Icon is unfortunately in Krakow uh, in another workshop, so he couldn't he couldn't join us now. So I will have his slides. 
But Saskia Buchholz from the Deutsche Wetterdienst is, is here and I'll just give her the floor and you can just take away sharing from me, I guess. Or let's see, I stop sharing. Can you share now or do I need to add you? I guess I need to give you the right, just. No, no, I think I can. You can do it. Yeah, sure. excellent. Yes, okay. So you do it yourself. So Perfect. Please, Perfect. Yeah, go ahead, it's all yours. So can you see my presentation in presentation mode? Yes, we can see it. Okay, Go perfect. Ahead. Yes, thank you very much, Miko, for the introduction. So I'm a researcher since uh, 2011 at the Deutsche Wetterdienst in Offenbach. And today I would like to present you the DWD um, E-Shape pilot. So, but I also would like to mention uh, my colleagues from the Finnish Meteorological Institute and from Geosphere Austria, who are also developing pilots in the climate showcase and the urban resilience to extreme weather pilot. So, for example, the FMI, so the Finnish Meteorological Institute, uses the sub-seasonal and seasonal forecasts um, yeah, to, to create product products for the city of Helsinki, which are about um, to improving the winter safety and to optimizing maintenance uh, costs uh, for the city when it comes to snowfall and street cleaning. And uh, our colleagues from Geosphere Austria, they are using climate projections and they are developing products uh, for air temperature and threshold exceedances related to temperature, for example, number of summer days or hot days. And they are creating uh, maps with these kind of climate projections for the end of this uh, century. And yeah, that's the product from Geosphere Austria and all the three pilots have the goal to strengthen the urban resilience and the preparedness to extreme weather, but also to climate variability and uh, the future climate by using these different kind of data sets um, going from sub-seasonal to seasonal to decadal and to climate projections. So our um, pilot uses seasonal climate forecasts and we develop the product for the 16 state capital cities in Germany and our E-shape pilot city Aschaffenburg. And also our goal was to increase the vulnerability of the urban population to these kind of hazardous weather events and risk course by climate variability. So when you think about, for example, heat waves or periods of anomalous high temperatures, it would be nice to have information for the occupational health or the safety sector so that they can take uh, action and can take preventive uh, measures, for example, for the urban population. And we are also providing decadal climate prediction, which can be the scientific basis for uh, mid-term um, urban planning decisions within the cities. And for our pilot, we are only using the forecast system in the version of 2.1. Uh, we are calculating um, hindcasts. Uh, we are using uh, 40 ensemble members. And for our forecasts, we are having 50 ensemble members. And all the model calculation is done at the ECMWF HPC infrastructure in Bologna. And then all the post-processing routines we are doing in-house on our HPC architecture. And the global climate forecasts have a very coarse resolution of about 100 by 100 kilometer. And that's quite coarse to make um, yeah, decisions for cities. So we increase the spatial resolution of the global climate forecast uh, to a grid, which is about five by five kilometer. And we are using um, a statistical downscaling approach, which is called episodes uh, to increase this resolution. Um, right now, I just want to give you some information about the climate prediction website where the E-Shape pilot could be found. So we would like to have a consistent evaluation and presentation of the climate predictions that we are producing um, across all the timescales. So we're providing sub-seasonal, seasonal and decadal predictions on our websites. And we have also different information layers for different user groups. For example, we are distinguishing between expert user groups where we also provide detailed information about the climate prediction skill. And for the more basic users, 
services like these or our municipalities, we are providing uh, products which are um, easier to be understand. For example, the prediction skill is not given by a skill map, but we are using a kind of traffic light uh, that shows uh, the prediction skill. And the whole website is um, developed in close cooperation with the users. So normally we are holding an annual workshop for the end users and we are informing our users twice per year via a newsletter about new changes and innovations on the website. And with the eShape pilot, uh, we started with a survey among um, 11 German cities, which are cities that we have cooperated in the past. And we were asking them for their requirements on new climate prediction products for their cities. We also had individual meetings with the representatives from the municipality of Aschaffenburg, which were mainly the um, environmental department and the urban planning department, yet yeah, to discuss their needs for the survey, uh, for the service. And the problem was that uh, most of the municipalities and cities have a huge knowledge gap when it comes to interpreting and understanding the climate predictions the, and their skills. So they have a huge knowledge gained um, during the last decade when it comes to climate projections, but not for climate prediction. And there was always this questions, we are not um, we are not sure how to use the climate prediction, what can be the added value for our everyday work. So I guess from the from the stories that were showed in, in the last session, we can learn a lot to give this information or the stories to this to the cities. This is how the DWD climate prediction website looks like. So it is available in German and in English. And on the figures, you can see, for example, I hope you can see my mouse here, you can see the basic climate predictions. And if you click on the map or on, on the text, you are coming to a site um, where you can choose between the sub-seasonal, the seasonal and the decadal predictions. And the E-shape pilot you will find under the seasonal and decadal climate predictions. And then the user can do some further selections. Uh, for example, you can choose if you want to have the results for a region or if you want to have results for the German cities. You can choose uh, the kind of variable currently uh, air temperature and precipitation is available. And then the results um, can be visualized in different ways. So here on the right hand side, you can see a visualization as a map but you can also get the information as a table or as a time series uh, for the coming months. Uh, available is an ensemble mean prediction and the probabilistic prediction, as you can see on the map and on the table. Yeah, this year we have some planned extensions. We want to be more interactive in the presentation of the basic climate predictions so that we choose or that we have combined maps and time series and the user can have a mouse over where he sees uh, the values right away. Also, we want to create more user oriented products. So we will introduce uh, trout indices uh, this summer. We are calculating, for example, the SPI, which is the standardized precipitation index, which you can see in the figure on the left side. And we are also calculating the standardized precipitation evapotranspiration index uh, for the more arid and warmer regions. So this is coming uh, this year. And I will close my... Um, my presentation, yeah, with some information for you for further reading. So the E-Shape um, Climate uh, Showcase has, uh, yeah, has created an E-Shape special issue. So the FMI's Climate Bulletin uh, research letters came out last year. And there you can find some more, more detailed information, for example, on the three pilots that were developed within the, the urban climate um, yeah, showcase. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Saskia.
I don't see any questions in the chat yet. If someone wants to just pose one, then please use the raise my hand button. Otherwise, I will just pass it on to the next presentation. Don't see anyone coming. So Miriam Kosmalev from the Finnish Metallurgical Institute. So thank you, Saskia. Uh, uh, and if there are still questions, monitor the chat. They might pop up there. But Miriam, go ahead with the next pilot, Harvest the Seeds. So oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mikko, I hope you can see my screen now. It's all good. Presentation mode, everything good. Perfect. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I will present uh, now the Harvester Season Service, um, which was um, part of the Climate Showcase within eShape. <clears throat> And it's a collaboration uh, between the University of Helsinki, uh, Finnish Metrological Institute in Finland, and uh, forestry uh, company uh, Metsateho, uh, also based in Finland. Um, the background uh, behind Harvester Seasons is that uh, Finland has um, and might follow also by all the other European countries has the direct uh, the, directive to um, assure uh, and securing sufficient uh, f forest um, uh, forestry um, operations and um, follow uh, and ensure um, ecological and social cultural sustainability for for these uh, harvesting operations and. Um, uh, and uh, this service is developed uh, mainly uh, at the moment uh, for the area of Finland. Um, since this country, you might know that 75% uh, of the uh, country is covered with forests and with an annual tax revenue of, of approximately 2.7 billion euros. Uh, this has a huge impact to the um, country's uh, income. And uh, about uh, one fifth of the industrial production um, of the Finnish exports is based on the forest industry. Uh, this is mostly um, on paper, board, converted products, sewn material, um, and wood based panels. This is uh, the background and uh, why do we need um, a service called Harvester Seasons? Um, basically, what we are looking uh, for is uh, these heavy machines in the forest, which are harvesting the trees, these forwarders and uh, harvester machines, and they are weighing up to 20 metric tons. And they require um, a strong soil bearing capacity of the ground to, um, to not um, create these deep, deep ruts in the uh, forest ground and destroy the ecosystem in the forest. So this is the reason why uh, FMI has um, decided to develop this uh, service uh, harvester seasons, which is basically a dynamic trafficability service, um, especially built for the forestry sector. Um, how is the service built? Um, the service combines um, a static terrain characteristic for uh, the area of Finland. Uh, this is available um, based on LIDAR measurements on a very high resolution of 60 by 60 um, meters. And this is then combined with uh, the, the dynamic component, which is uh, on the one hand, the short term forecast, which is the 10 day weather forecast information coming directly from Finnish Metrological Institute. And then on a longer term um, from the EZMWF seasonal uh, forecast information from C3S, uh, which is uh, then bias corrected, as uh, Mikko already said in the introduction uh, with ERA-5 land reanalysis data. And based on the information of uh, snow depths, soil wetness, and soil temperature, then um, the service is offering a very easy traffic light system on this index-based trafficability forecast. And here on the right side, you see then these uh, traffic lights, this like red um, corresponds to bad trafficability, uh, yellow is insecure, 
and green is good trafficability for this uh, forest area. And this uh, traffic light system was already uh, well known for the forest operators in Finland due to the availability of the static terra characteristics, which has been already uh, quite often in use. And uh, this is now available as a, some kind of uh, forecast system, which, which helps the uh, operation planners uh, in their uh, daily um, uh, in their daily uh, decision making and this is then how the service looks like um, it's you can uh, find it in the web pretty easily just type in google harvest the seasons then you the first hit will be our service and uh, the user can then uh, zoom into the area uh, which he is interested in and get uh, uh, the trafficability for each point uh, of interest and also the time series of the trafficability forecast. Additionally, also all the background information is uh, shown, which is the snow depth and soil temperature, which is uh, the input data for the trafficability map. And what is uh, the uh, beneficial part of Harvester Seasons is that it's bridging the gap between uh, the scientific output and uh, the forest operators and translate everything into a pretty easy language and is easy accessible for, for the users. Um, the service was was um, co-designed together with the company Metzateho, which is a forestry comp company, and uh, with, the, with their contacts in the uh, Finnish forestry sector, we tailored uh, the service directly to the user needs so that it's easy understandable. Um, what the service is offering is uh, metro metrological and seasonal forecast information, then the dynamical trafficability index, what I already told before, and then also uh, the uh, risk for forest fires, which is also quite important for the forestry sector, especially in the northern countries in the, during the summertime. The risk for forest fires is quite high from time to time. And in this time, um, harvesting is not, uh, or is not allowed or prohibited. Uh, then the tree cover mat uh, from the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service, um, NDVI from Sentinel-3 and what was a special user request, which we implemented also as alternate color coding for vision impaired users. So that does not sound so obvious, but was a special request by the users. And then we have a short guideline um, on operation management and the influence of clear cutting on carbon emissions. This was provided by our partners from the University of Helsinki. Here you can see uh, the alternate color coding, uh, which is then not anymore the traffic light system in green and red, but different color coding. And additionally, um, we have uh, a section for uh, as, uh, as, um, a service offer for uh, paying uh, users. This is a um, non-open part of uh, the service. And for we have we have developed this for one uh, test stakeholder, um, especially to their uh, user requests. This service is uh, tailored exclusively for this stakeholder and gives them a detailed information. In this case, for a big collection of forest inventories, so that they can immediately see all their forest inventories and the trafficability for for these uh, forest stands immediately. And additionally, it is possible that we um, offer direct API access to all of our data sets via the back end of our FMI SmartMed service, uh, server, how this service is implemented in the background. Um, you can find Harvester Seasons via different uh, channels. Um, we were one of the use cases uh, from Vekeo since our service is running on the Vekeo platform. And we were one of the test users. You can easily find us, us via Google. And more importantly, all the updates, service updates will be posted on um, the dedicated Harvester Seasons LinkedIn page. And we are planning, uh, we are giving from time to time webinars and user events, for example, uh, late 
this summer uh, we are planning a new web webinar for, for users. So if you're interested, just follow us on Harvester Seasons LinkedIn page. We will um, promote the events there. And we have been also uh, publishing in the FMI uh, research letters in the special issue for eShape. Um, and I want to close my presentation with uh, a feedback by uh, our partner from the forestry sector, um, which says that this service uh, might be skillful for uh, the operation planning, especially concerning uh, minimizing the environmental impact and sustainable harvesting operation. Thank you very much. And if you have any question, just uh, kindly ask or just give me any feedback via email or directly via the service. Thank you very much, Miriam. Uh, the chat has not gotten any questions yet. Does anyone want to react just directly? I don't also see any raised hands. So thank you, Miriam. I guess also here people are shy to do questions. Don't be. Just uh, write something in the chat and, and Miriam and also Saskia from the first presentation will, will just pick up on the question and answer in the chat. But I think it's good for us in the time sense to, to go forward. It gives us some time at the end to talk. So we have the, the next uh, pilot to be presented. And then I forgot because of our radiant ladies in these presentations that we also actually have Stavros Solomos to present in addition to Andrea Vaida for the next pilot, which is on the seasonal preparedness. But I guess Andrea will start. So just go ahead and, and uh, share your slides. And then Andrea and Stavros will take us to the next pilot. Yes, Excellent. hello. Everything is fine. Yeah, it okay. looks good. Go Thank ahead. you. Yes, uh, thank you, Miko. So my name is Andrea Weid and I will talk about the sub-seasonal and seasonal predictions for tire companies, which was developed within the seasonal preparedness uh, pilot. And then Stavros, we talk about the criterion service. So we developed this service together with my colleagues Otto Huverinen, Mika Rantanen, Andrea Stack, and uh, Markus Melin. And uh, this service was developed especially for Finland. What was the motivation for this work? Uh, well, in Finland, winter tires should be used between November and March, but according to the new law, only if the weather and road surface conditions require it. So there's a quite a lot of freedom given to the drivers. This means that the time of winter tires installation and distribution to the customer varies from year to year. And uh, it causes uh, quite um, some rush during uh, autumn when the first snow arrives uh, in the uh, tire change garages. And tire companies don't use any tailored products, forecast products. So we assume that subseasonal and seasonal forecast would facilitate the preparedness of tire companies and also the public. Driven by, by this idea, we developed this subseasonal and seasonal prediction service for tire companies, uh, which is operational and provides quality assured uh, tailored subseasonal and seasonal forecast for winter tire season and also safety driving conditions. And to increase the uptake and the usability of the forecast products, we developed the service in, in uh, collaboration with the user through an iterative strategy. And this strategy in, uh, had a co-design, the development to piloting uh, phases, uh, evaluation and adjusting cycle. So I will talk about uh, a bit all about these phases and then presenting the service itself. And uh, our user who, who was involved in the development is the Finnish uh, tire and car service chain, uh, Vianor. And Vianor wanted to test actually how could they utilize this forecast in their business? Are the forecasts reliable enough for their operations? The initial assumption was that they would use it 
uh, for better pre preparation, for better preparing the operations for the high season, especially in autumn, like seasonal management, calling in seasonal workers, but also for customer communication and marketing activities. And uh, we uh, engaged Viano from the very beginning of the uh, project through various ways and channels uh, to harmonize their needs, to select together uh, with, uh, with them the tailored forecast products and design them, uh, and to design the visualization and delivery platforms. And they, were, uh, they, are, were, they have tested the service and provided feedback about the forecast products. So uh, from the very beginning, it was it became clear that actually they are much more interested in the subseasonal time scale because all of their decisions are done within for the six week uh, time period. So based on this, we def, uh, we we selected and we designed four uh, subseasonal uh, products, forecast products the winter tire season, which had two components, the onset of the season uh, expressed through the probability of slippery conditions and the offset uh, expressed through probability of non-slippery conditions. Then the probability of freezing temperature, probability of snow cover and snow depth. And in addition, we also uh, designed two uh, seasonal climate outlooks, the probability of freezing temperature and probability of snow cover. And uh, as input in, in uh, service development, we use the models from ECMWF, the ensemble prediction system for the subseasonal forecast data. And uh, this was used directly from ECMWF as this is not available in uh, C3S. We use the reforecast for the quality assessment and bias corrections and the real-time forecast for uh, in the operational uh, work and uh, also use the era 5 reanalysis data and the gridded observational data for evaluation and calibration of the input variables and the uh, and the pilot uh, products and for the seasonal forecast uh, we use the cs5 model data uh, from c3s but uh, for quality assessment we use the full uh, resolution data reforecast data and the uh, subseasonal uh, outlooks forecast outlooks um, are produced in operational run on fmi servers and they are disseminated through an online user interface called ilmanet platform which is used also by our customer service uh, while the uh, se seasonal climate outlooks are produced on the wikio platform and disseminated to the users on fmi web portal but before producing the, the outlooks, we run a quality assessment of the forecast variables, both of the subseasonal and seasonal forecast variables. But I will show here only some results from the subseasonal forecast data. So we evaluated and calibrated the, the temperature and the snow variables, which are used in the production using several bias adjustment methods. And you can see in the graph the evaluation of the raw forecast data, which is in blue, climatology in purple, and the bias corrected data for temperature uh, at top and for uh, snow at the bottom. And clearly all the applied bias adjustment methods improve the quality of the forecast. But even so, the, the temperature a forecast had scale only up to two, three weeks. The, the snow forecast had quite a good scale up even to six weeks. So we corrected the data and then produced, um, produced the, the outlooks, which were disseminated to the, the users through the Ilmanet platform. Uh, users were able to access the platform using credentials and uh, you can see here a screenshot of this platform and uh, an example of the product, the winter tire season, the onset of the winter tire season. So basically all the products are listed on the left panel. Users were able to access the, uh, the products and for each product we provided information about the 
about uh, the product itself, how how it was that design and computed, but also advice on how to interpret the product. And we uh, provided uh, six weekly maps, which describe uh, the the predicted weather conditions through probabilities, and an animation of these maps is also available. The service was released in September 2020, and we ran two pilot seasons. And uh, these uh, forecasts are updated uh, two times a week on Tuesday and Friday. As for the seasonal outlook, uh, we, as I mentioned, we ran those on Wikio, and then they are uh, um, they were they are disseminated on FMI web portal, and the service was or this part of the service was released in January 2021. We uh, provide um, a season of forecast for three months ahead through monthly maps, and uh, each uh, and the forecasts are updated uh, every month. And also in this case, uh, a description of the products and also an advice on how to interpret the products is provided. But after running the pilots, we uh, run, made a quantitative evaluate, qualitative evaluation of the seasonal out of both seasonal and the subseasonal outlook. But we also relied on the users' feedback on the uh, usability of the forecast. And I will show here some results for the subseasonal outlooks. We evaluated uh, basically all the uh, products uh, except the winter tire season because we haven't had any data to rely on. We were lacking the user data on time of tire change, so we couldn't run a proper evaluation. But in the rest, we evaluated the outlooks against observations and climatology. And it became clear that the snow products um, perform pretty well, outperformed the climatology, uh, even for the sixth week, uh, sixth week, but in most cases, at least for the first four weeks. But the um, freezing uh, uh, temperature uh, outlook did not perform well at all. The climatology beat the forecast. Well, we also asked the users what was their um, experience with this survey. Is, and actually has planned the usage of this tool in different situations, but they were not able to test the forecast products in operational work uh, because they would have need to do some technical development. It was pretty difficult to include the products in their operational workflow. They needed to to somehow to forward this information to their regional garages, and they found difficult to work with the forecast. And I, we had the feeling that they were not really prepared to do this kind of changes, uh, this kind of in, the, uh, investment for the technical work. They also had difficulties in uh, understanding the, the reliability of the data and actually in handling the uncertainties from the data. So. After all, they, they thought that they would need pretty high probabilities also for the last weeks uh, of uh, prediction to be able to make a decision. So they, uh, after all, they, they, they came to the conclusion that they might not be able to use this service in their operational work. But at the same time, we also transferred the service to our customer uh, service so they can market it uh, among the transportation sector's users who are interested in the service. But if we would like to read more about the developed service, uh, we also have a short paper in the FMI Climate Bulletin already mentioned by Saskia. And also the success story of the service is available from the eShape web page. So feel free to con uh, contact me also if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. And before we put Stavros to this stage, I see here that Nieves Pena has made a question in the chat. And, and <clears throat> so this is about if this uh, kind of uh, preparation, uh, better winter preparation information cannot also be used in, in, for the road infrastructure more in general. Um, and do you want to answer it directly now and then 
we give it yes i i can answer it yeah, it can be used so of course we develop this together with the tire companies and for the tire companies but basically it can be used in general in transport sector either by other companies or road infrastructure or or yeah so this is possible and that's what we hope for in the future i might add to this that in finland we do have a winter road maintenance uh, directly a forecast for winter road maintenance so there's uh, a specific so that's weather based not looking so far uh, so not using subseason and seasonal forecasts, and that is very heavily used for when they send out the the, the kind of uh, plows, for example, for pushing away the snow that comes and stuff like this. So that's why this is a very developed uh, market, which is living very much in this shorter time frame, and and that's why they don't feel the need so much to look further. But in principle, we would be we could even run this. Uh, the road maintenance model with subseasonal or seasonal forecast information. It's just like that the customers don't seem to be needing that necessarily. But thank you for the question. And uh, please be courageous and put more questions in the chat. But now it's Stavros Solomos. And sorry for forgetting you in my introduction slides. So Stavros, go Ooh. ahead with yours. Yes. <clears throat> So, yes, thank you all for being here. Uh, information mode. Yes, now, now it's yeah, all good. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, we will talk about the criterion service. That is a service developed also in um, in uh, its shape showcases. It has to do with the modeling of um, of weather and climate uh, conditions at. Uh, uh, touristic uh, sites, sites of cultural heritage mainly. So the the motivation the, behind this is the awareness that um, cultural cultural heritage monuments uh, are becoming more and more in danger uh, due to the um, climate change implications. And uh, for example, in a recent study that we did in the Academy of Athens, we developed a list of um, uh, relative uh, indices uh, for uh, various um, climatic fields. And uh, it is obvious that um, even for the, let's say, the RCP 4.5 scenario, but most importantly for the RCP 8.5 scenario, uh, almost all uh, areas, especially in the southern parts of Europe, uh, will be in danger uh, due to the climate change uh, effects. And uh, one possibly more interesting thing that we noticed is that if you would take a look here after 2040, the RCP 8.5 scenario is actually going towards this highway to hell that was mentioned by the General Secretary of the United Nations, Gutierrez. And uh, in my opinion, this is now the realistic scenario. What we used to refer to as the worst case, in my opinion, is now the, the real case. Case and realistic, realistic scenario. The same thing happens for all um, climate fields. This is uh, aridity, for example. So, in the frame of um, seasonal preparedness in shape, uh, we thought to to prepare a tool uh, that is related with um, uh, the monuments of cultural heritage in Greece to start with. Uh, in short, Criterion is developed in uh, the frames of uh, GeoGeo. Uh, it's co-designed with the Institute of Greek Tourism Confederation and provide this, provides detailed short-term and seasonal forecasts and climatological information at the empty historical sites in Greece, which have been defined as UNESCO Cultural Heritage Monuments. 
So more scientific and technical details are again, as um, uh, described earlier, presented in the FMI climate bulletin. And uh, you can actually visit the, the site and take a look. During the preparation and co-design uh, stages and in the discussions that we had with Insete, they mainly focused on uh, two things. First of all, they focused on the simple as possible user interface, but then they suggested to start with the UNESCO Cultural Heritage Monuments in Greece. So in the in the sense that you need to start from something. So we selected these 20 sites. As we will discuss later, we we uh, most likely will now uh, expand this list. But for the time, the sites included in this um, service are mostly around uh, Greece, like you know the Acropolis of Athens, Trinity, the Misras, Mykines, Pythagoras, Delos and so on, uh, sites of very high importance in terms of cultural heritage, but also very attractive uh, to, uh, for touristic um, activities. They attract millions of tourists per year in, um, in Greece. And the, the methodology is based on uh, era 5 CFS and WRF uh, data for the local climatology, the seasonal forecast and the long uh, and the short term forecast at uh, a higher resolution, all of which are included under a single uh, platform uh, with a, a front page that one can visit and select between the short term for forecast or the seasonal forecast for specific sites. And then uh, you first get a quick view of the, of the basic, uh, of, of real time, let's say, um, conditions in, uh, in all of these uh, areas, together with some basic information, touristic information and historical information on uh, the sites. And uh, then, of course, uh, you can um, go deeper and ask for more detailed uh, forecasts in uh, the form of simple um, uh, graphs and uh, <clears throat> images and so on. And even more, you can get more detailed uh, graphs like uh, um, time series of temperature, precipitation, um, humidity, and um, the presented for the, the seasonal forecasts are presented in relation with the, with the um, mean climatology of this area. So you know that in this month will be a little more uh, windy or uh, a little less rain than usual in a specific um, area. Uh, so I'm trying to be brief, but uh, then our next steps include the, the role of um, atmospheric uh, air quality, because as you may know, apart from the climate and weather, air quality also plays a big impact and affects the, the cultural heritage monuments. So especially in Europe and especially in the southern parts of Europe, we're always experiencing um, increased, the increased loads of aerosols in the atmosphere, most, most importantly, Saharan dust, and biomass burning in the summers in um, the summer. 
So yes, our next development steps in Futurial include the extension to other sites and other locations in, the, in Europe. This can be fairly easy uh, expanded to other countries that are interested to include, uh, uh, let's say, UNESCO cultural heritage monuments, but also other locations of uh, significant uh, uh, of cult of uh, touristic um, significance. Uh, we are planning also. We are planning also to include climate change considerations at these cultural heritage monuments because, uh, starting with ESAP, uh, we we somehow stimulated a discussion here in Greece with stakeholders and um, and the the government agencies that uh, uh, deal with this um, with cultural heritage and um, including also the the future projections of climate change will be another option uh, as well as to include the um, air quality um, Forecast starting with the, the forecast of, of dust intrusions, uh, which affect uh, not only the, the monuments per se, but also the, the, the health and well being of, uh, of uh, tourists and uh, visitors. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much. Well, thank you. And I'm happy to take the questions you can. Yeah, thank you very much, Stavros. Again, in the chat, no questions yet. Does someone want to react directly? Please raise your hand. Otherwise, I will continue on my behalf for the presentation of Jak Ikonen. Doesn't seem that there's anyone asking anything now. Thank you very much, Stavros. So please, if you still have a question to Stavros or Miriam or Andrea or to Saskia, just write it in the chat. And here I will continue by sharing my screen again. So I actually have here quickly slides from uh, from the kind of FMI and the the some so the Austrian Austrian um, uh, weather service uh, slides on the on their pilots, where Varnwolf, for example, was this planning of, of how the road maintenance for snow removal, for putting grit or on the streets and cleaning it off again. That was one of the services. Um, I don't know if there were so great, yeah, not very great kind of slides here to, to quickly see this, but in principle, these are uh, parts and please read them up in the, in the uh, climate bulletin thing. And I apologize for here still having some as the name uh, as they have Geosphere Austria, I guess, as a name nowadays. Anyway, here quickly just some in, impressions of and the websites where, where one can look at these services. Um, so I will talk about the hydropower from Snow Pilot which is from Jakko Ikone and Cemal Patanis, um, our colleagues at, at uh, the Finnish Met Institute Arctic Space Center. Um, and the service here is very low, well, local. It's a big region. It's the uh, one of the, or the biggest hydropower um, uh, operator in Finland is Kemioki Oy. And this is a service specifically for them. They do have something like 21 dams in the same river system, which has many different uh, rivers uh, com combining in the end. Uh, and very much effort is put on, on the, the snow observations and, and because that's a big uncertainty questions for, for how much is there in the res reservoir. Uh, they can always measure at the dams and, and through river observation stations, the water level, but they always have to be a little unsure of how much will come more from the snow pack around the, the, the rivers. Yeah, so it depends on, on having a, so the service is for, first of all, visible at hops.fmi.fi, so it's an open website, everybody can check it out, um, but there are free, 
let's say, four different things that uh, are in here. So it's the hops uh, model, it's a stream flow routing system, then there's actually a machine learning based stream flow forecast as another option for this stream flow routing. Um, and then there's this assimilation of the snow remote sensing data to improve the estimates of how much uh, water is in the snow available. So HOPS is a kind of the hydrological model of the Finnish Meteorological Institute. Um, and I don't go much into the details, but this is a gridded model. So, and it's not using any kind of um, uh, kind of tuning weights based on observations. It's, it's really uh, a model by itself um and with those parameters and outputs uh, um then the it depends a lot on land surface modeling so uh it gets soil temperatures and snowpack actually data that could also be used for the harvester season system um but in this case uh you can see here that here also weather information is combined with then seasonal outlooks for longer uh, to combine and then looking backwards to to explain to the uh, hydropower operators of, of where did their kind of like measurements come from uh, and that is yeah just the definition of the service there's a lot of detailed information for the end users to to look into the seasonal ensemble forecast information and here I think at some point there is uh, a system where you can see the measurements compared to the forecasts but this is not on this slide um, yeah maybe it wasn't one of these so uh, I don't have the time and as I'm not the expert doing this service maybe I should not be too bold anyway to present it but in general, the HOPS model is perform has performed well until now, uh, as demonstrated by hindcasts. Uh, and compared to other hydrological models, this is a good good information, as there is no observation material used for tuning the model. So if it works, it's just a good model. Um, and then uh, the uh, there are very good uh, kind of experiences also now that the new machine learning forecast that is being developed uh, during eShape and is being used here as one option to look at uh, that that is has very well worked it's a model that Matti Kamarain and one of our other colleagues has produced for a competition in the United States and that model works also in Finland well but in essence we do have here again the same seasonal forecast information just using the first three months of it and, and applying it through HOPS, the hydrological prediction system. Also, this, this material can be looked at in the climate bulletin, which Saskia already put. So there are actually all of these uh, pilots presented here. And even if we officially always called it that we have kind of four, five pilots, then in, in actuality, when one is split into three different and one is split into two different kind of services. We have in the total something more like eight services. And seven of them are presented here. I guess one of them was more as a part of a description. But this is all I wanted to talk about uh, in here. I think it was very nice from the presentations that my colleagues and the pilot leaders gave here. Uh, that co-design was a very important factor. So um, not just making a service uh, based on a, an idea, but there was a lot of interaction. It was a key factor that eShape overall for all the uh, pilots it had uh, employed, that we had to show that how and how do we work with end users so that they are there to define what the service is like. And I think that is probably for all of us uh, the, the key kind of success in e-shape that, that we got that to be done. It didn't always kind of perfectly work or, or you learn a lot of uh, actions because I think from Andrea Vida's tire company, for example, I guess there the one issue is that this operation is so 
kind of like tied to a small window where they have more people, they do more things, but they are so highly busy in this frame of time that it's actually difficult for them to organize, go look at the web page and, and um, decide from there something so that they didn't then in the end succeed. But in any case, it was a very good exercise for us to understand of how do we have to kind of how far do we have to go in the value chain and how far do we have to prepare information that it is actually used in, in this kind of everyday operations in different sectors. So I'm like, as this E-shape is finishing up uh, soon, I'm very thankful for, for these pilots and their leaders. I was the showcase uh, coordinator for, for climate, it made it easy for me. And I, I must say that we were, I think, particular area of successful pilots compared to the other showcases as well, which all had also interesting information and, and services done. So I urge everyone to check out the eshape.eu site. Uh, I've guessed some of them would have been also relevant here to predict that, for example, the food security or the kind of yield forecasting from, from um, uh, for, for the agriculture thing probably also was using, for example, seasonal forecasts uh, uh, as, as it also has a quite long outlook. So, but we didn't have more time. We also have now only 10 minutes to go. And I would like to use those 10 minutes for anyone to kind of question us for something. Don't have to write it in the chat, just raise your hand. If you don't have questions, then I still have one for at least Miriam and, and Andrea. So let's go for that one. So I think uh, Stavros and, and Saskia already also showed where are the services going uh, forward to. So what are the next steps and, and uh, kind of where is the development heading to? So if Andrea, would you want, want to comment for the for the tire company, if there's a future to be seen or if that was more like done and needs to be picked up if someone gets excited again. Yeah, I can comment, of course. So actually, we are not considered that right now uh, they didn't, they cannot use the, the service. They would like better or less uncertainties in the forecast. So they do not want to make any investment and any decision on a forecast which is reliable only for the first few weeks. That was clear. On the other hand, as I mentioned, um, I'm, or we discussed with the customer service, with FMI customer service, because we know that there are other users who might, from the transportation sectors, who might be interested in the service. So we are transferring the service to the customer service so they can uh, advertise it and they can sell it basically. Thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> Miriam, are you still online? Would you want to comment on the harvester seasons development? Yes, I can I can comment on that. Um, so basically, since uh, eShape is now ending, we have now uh, just kick off, kicked off the new project uh, dealing with uh, the new uh, Destination Earth uh, um, program from the European Commission. And uh, this aims in developing a high accurate digital model of the Earth. And this will help us to um, uh, offer our service, uh, we are testing uh, the data and offering our service on a European level since at the moment the service is, the tra especially the trafficability information is uh, located in Finland only and we are now trying to develop the trafficability uh, information and climate information to a European level for the forestry sector. So these are the upcoming plans. So stay tuned on what uh, on the LinkedIn posts and especially also the webinar where then in late summer where then the first hopefully the first new data sets will be presented. 
Yeah, and especially if there if you, there is anyone with contacts to the forestry sector or or does services to them, I think there it would be really interesting to to find maybe someone to to validate and check out how the kind of European trafficability static map that we try to do at something probably at 30 meters that um, that that is something that is is in Finland it was developed so that a lot of uh, forestry operators were directly uh, kind of doing a validation campaign during their works uh, that something like this would be very helpful in, in Europe as well so if anyone has contacts take Please share them with Miriam. It would help us a lot. But otherwise, I don't see anyone having questions. I don't know what we need. Need anyone want to say something in the end? Otherwise, I would just conclude that thank you for having us uh, in this web develop. I think it is a very uh, kind of valuable thing that we do have these venues where where the sector can meet but Jaroslav please you go ahead and thank you very much Mika <clears throat> I really enjoyed this discussion and uh, congratulations to the excellent work that you have been doing and uh, displaying thank you also for organizing this uh, this site event it's really I appreciate that uh, this week is uh, busy for everybody and uh, we really uh, would like to thank you for all your efforts in the putting uh, put in uh, organizing it thank you very much because you are closing this session a little bit ahead of the others. So I just wanted to thank also to the audience. Well, you can exit both this session and then the whole meeting. This is the end, basically. Um, if you would stay five minutes, I would, what I was planning to say in the plenary was to thank you for participation and thank you for excellent work. So I can do it right now and uh, you don't need to wait. Uh, I just wanted to remind that uh, the web festival is continuing tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, there will be two guest sessions that are excellent and really complementary to what you are doing. The first one is on um, climate forecast uh, from subseasonal to, to decadal forecast and how, how this climate information can be used to improve the existing uh, existing climate services but also offer additional application and the second guest session afternoon is one of the uh, project that, he, uh, that are funded from mission adaptation and this one is focusing on the new uh, climate risk climate risk uh, assessment framework at regional and local level um, so Climax is developing the framework and the toolbox for the local and regional authorities. And again, you are very welcome to follow the discussion because with many of your data application on page, you can contribute to shaping it. Thank you very much, Mika, and uh, have a nice day. Yeah, and, and have a good World Meteorological Day. I guess today right. is the exactly. UN Day for Meteorology, so we should all be really happy about it. Uh, so. Thank, you, Thank you that you have mentioned that, but it, this is exactly why we have chosen yeah. those. Uh, happy meteorological day. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye.